All right, so today I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a 12 sided pot. What I'm doing at the moment, I'm just finishing the cross hatching on these. These slabs have been extruded and cut to the size, the shape and the angle that I want. And I'm going to start sticking them together. You've got to make sure with this cross hatching you get a really, really good deep cut. This just allows the slabs to stick more securely. And you need to spend a little bit of time on this. The better you do this, the better the pot will stick. As you can see, I've got lots of pieces, 12 pieces. Always gets a little bit more awkward when you're working on, on more pieces of clay, actually sticking it together and getting it to fit. So I've mixed my slurry up and I've got a really, really nice, so they're smooth slurry and I'm going to start sticking these together. <laughs> you always apply a generous amount <clears throat> of slurry to the two sides that you're going to stick. Take the two pieces, line them up at the back, line them up at the top, push them into position. I always spin it around, have a look, make sure that I like the position that it's in, clean it up a little bit. And a little brush. Just have a quick clean up in there. Right, second slab. So from the from the get go, it starts to support itself, and I always I always build these things upside down. If you, I'm sure I've told you in, in previous vids, if you, if you build them the other way up fighting gravity really, the pots are wanting to sort of separate and pull apart. At least if you build it upside down, the slabs are sort of pulling themselves together if that makes sense. With a pot with so many sides, you've really, really got to make sure that you get these in the right position. Another thing you've got to make sure of is you've got the right amount of slabs. I've made these in the past where I've cut 11 slabs and stuck it together and tried to work out why it's not symmetrical. I've also cut 13 slabs and stuck them together and wondered why. They don't look that good when you too, put too many slabs on. So just make sure you've got the right amount of slabs for the job. People keep asking me how I make these slabs. <laughs> What I use, I use an extruder and I actually pass them through a die which is of a certain shape and it gives me this profile every time. The secret to these is actually cutting them to the right angle. Which I do use in templates. So I'm working my way around this pot nice and steady. So it's starting to take shape. slurry on these things. Looking good. Quite pleased with this so far. I did once make one with 16 sides. And when I looked at it, I thought, well, it's virtually round. I think that 12 sides is about the limit. If you go above 12, you're just making a round pot, basically. At least with 12 sides, you've got a little bit of interest in the pot. You can see this is really starting to take shape now. At this stage you've got to start thinking, are we going to meet up in the right place? I've got three slabs left and I've got quite a big gap to fill. And we'll see how we get on, see how we 
how we progress. I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on these slabs when I push them together, but I'm trying not to distort them. It's very easy to push these things out of shape. You've got to be careful as you put them together that you don't actually push them out of shape. It's very easy to do. These are on the soft side of leather hard. If, if the, you try and build these pots with the slabs too hard, they'll fall apart. The joints dry up too quickly as you're building them. You need these on the soft side of leather hard. You've got more chance of them sticking together. Right, so now I've got that gap to fill. I need to move this and just cork it into position. That's got to go in there. I put this end in first, bring it together. That just fits nicely. And I can have a good look around it, make sure that it's really, really well pushed together on all the stages. There's no gaps, it's not opened up. I'm quite pleased with that. It's starting to take shape. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to spin this. tops. These are not too bad. I've actually pushed these together quite well. I'm pleased with this. But it's always best to go around and just give them a little bit of a tweak just to make sure that they are they are actually stuck together and they're in the right position. water on these at this stage. The last thing you want is these getting too wet. But you do need to just tidy that top up a little bit. Look inside, make sure there's no no gaps. You clear all this excess slurry away that allows you to see the joints, they look alright to me. Push together, happy with that. Now you can see the profile on that, that's looking quite nice. I'm just going to spin that again. Now there you go. So that's your 12 sided pot together. too much tidying up at this stage and just let it relax instead of pull itself together. Nice, I'm happy with that, that's lovely. You can see that. Right, this is going to be put on one side to dry, probably till tomorrow. This is getting quite late in the day and then I'll, I'll put a base on it and put some feet in. So I'll see you later. Right, so we're going to fit this pot to its base. This is a slab that I rolled out a little bit earlier. What I do, I take the pot, set it on the slab, make sure that it's as symmetrical as I can get it. Then I put a mark, you've seen this before, mark there, mark there, and we start to cut. And I'm cutting right up against the pot slightly into it if anything so that I get a good a good tight fit. Take the pot off carefully. If you've got your slab. Let's 
usual paper towel slab. Right. We're gonna put on plenty of slurry. Plenty, plenty, plenty. I can't emphasize enough how much of this stuff you need. It helps to rehydrate the bottom side of that pot and it just makes the sticking process that much easier, more successful. You get plenty on. Even if it's there flooding all over the place, don't worry about it, you just get plenty on there. Right, so we've got the reference mark against reference mark. Get that in position. Make sure it's well down on the uh, on the board. More of this. Fill all them gaps up. Get plenty on. Right, and then we can start to sort of move this clay into position. Wet finger, finger behind to support. Start to work on it. Push the clay right up against. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm pushing the clay right up and filling that gap. Working from about an inch back and just pushing it into position. It's really difficult to do this with the camera being where it is and you seeing it. So you work all the way around the pot. What I tend to do if I'm doing one that's sort of four or six sides is I do side opposite side side opposite side but when you've got 12 to think about it can get quite difficult and i have been known to forget so the rubbing the uh rubbing the uh the clay right so we just tidy this up with a sponge Lots of noises coming from next door. I'm trying to video this. You'll have to excuse the uh, the neighbours. They're a bit noisy. And make sure that's really, really well pressed in all the way around. More coil of clay. And we're just going to feed this in to that bottom joint. Just just to reinforce it, just to get that added extra bit of strength. People are still next door whispering. And that just finishes it off. Tidy this up. Oh, that's the base fitted. Right, we're going to fit some feet to these pots. First thing I'm going to do with this is just cut a hole in the bottom 
I'm just trying to find the centre by putting in the mark. And the mark. That's what it gives me the centre line. And then I'm just going to cut that through with a little cutter, half inch cutter. Right. There we go. So you've got to check out the base, make sure that it's well stuck, no gaps, no cracks. Looks alright to me. Let me do it a quick clean up with a sponge. I'm going to use this small press mould. I don't know if you can see that. I make these press moulds up. I carve these these little sort of feet in a piece of clay, and then I take I take moulds from them. And uh, if I need smaller feet, <clears throat> what I do, I take a cast from that, then I let that dry, and that sort of shrinks by so many percent, five, seven percent, and then I take a, I'll fire that, and then I'll take a cast from that which gives me a smaller foot and if I need a smaller foot for a smaller pot I'll go through the same process again and it keeps getting smaller and smaller but you do keep the detail it's easier to make one large uh, sort of, uh, piece and shrink it than keep making lots of ever decreasing sizes so when we're using this I take the clay I'll show you that again I'm sort of rushing on we take the mould and we take a little sausage of clay, push it against the mould and we press it into position. And you can see I've got that filling the mould. You take a little harp cutter and you cut across the top. And then you cut across that. That then gives you a foot. Take a little bit of clay, lift the foot free. You can see that's the foot. I don't know if it's focusing on that all right. So that's one foot. Now this has got 12 sides. I'm not going to put 12 feet in it. I'm going to put six. I think 12 is too many. And especially at this size. You see when you when you put this on, you sort of curve that. And you get it in position. It's trespassing into this area anyway. So, so that, that's fine at that width. So I'm going to rapidly make six of these. I'll put the pot to one side. And I'll just work on this board. On the back side of them, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a fash, which I'm just going to tidy off with this knife. Just get rid of that on all six of them. It's easier to do it now than do it when it's when it's attached. six of them tidied up. Right, so we can bring the pot back in. So they're going to fit on like that. There's going to be six of them. So every other corner gets a foot. I think six is enough on that. I think 12 would have been too many. 
it works all right with six. Right, start to apply these things. What I do, I take a knife and I mark where the foot is set. Mark all six. And then we can start one at a time. So I tend to cross hatch across that face so we've got a good key. We don't want these things coming off. I tend to work around the front here, so I'll just I'll just do this, this at this point. You get the foot in line, in place, and then you push it down into position very, very gently. And very easy to damage these things. And you slowly work your way around the pot. Slips a bit on the thick side, so I'm just going to put a bit of water to it. That's better. That's the last one in position. Just going to go around and check them all, make sure that they're all alright. They're all stuck. It's best not to do too much work on these things, just leave them alone to sort of settle. And, and all the time they're drying, them feet are being sucked into the pot. mark on it I always put my badge on or some sort of mark I think if you make these things you should have the courage to stamp them so that's the stamp a little bit of cross hatching some drainage holes in this and I tend to put four. I put quite big ones. I've had complaints from potters about the holes being too small and them not being able to get wires through. So what I tend to do I make them on the big side. It helps with drainage and it also makes it a lot easier to get your wires in. You think you've got to pass three or four wires through that it can be quite difficult for a smaller hole so I tend to leave quite a big hole so that's how I put the feet on and I'm just going to make sure that everything is clean and tidy and finished at this stage and properly in position right 